Hello, everyone, and welcome to the College Admissions Collaborative Highlighting Engineering and Technology Virtual College Fair. I'd like to thank you all for joining us here today. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we do get started. There is a Q&A button located at the bottom of your screen, which you can use to ask questions to our presenters at any time during the session. Your camera and microphone are turned off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this presentation is also being recorded and will be available by tomorrow end of business day in case you guys missed anything or wanted to refresh your memory. Now, without further ado, I'll turn over to our presenters. Here we go. Welcome, everyone. We'd like to thank you for joining us. We are grateful for the opportunity to connect with you virtually. My name is Mariah McLean Giardino. I'm an Associate Director at Rochester Institute of Technology, RIT. I am here today with my colleague, Mark Munzer, who is an RIT alumnus and Senior Associate Director. We also have two current student ambassadors, Diksha and Dylan. They will speak about their experiences at RIT a little bit later. So together, we hope to provide you with helpful information about RIT as you begin your college search. So we'll begin with an overview of RIT and uh, about the academic opportunities that are available for you. First, RIT is home to more than 16,000 students and about 13,000 of whom are undergraduates. So if you include our international campuses, our total enrollment is close to 19,000. That makes RIT one of the largest private universities in the country. You'll meet students here from all 50 states and about 90 different countries. We have almost 2,000 international students over 2,000 students who identify as part of the Alana population, which is African American, Latin American, and Native American. And we also have another form of diversity that you won't find in too many other places. Uh, RIT is home to about 900 students who are either deaf or hard of hearing. So one of RIT's nine colleges is the National Technical Institute for the Deaf or NTID. So as an RIT student, don't be surprised if you see a lot of people using American Sign Language. It's a really important part of our inclusive culture here. Uh, definitely one of my favorite things about working at RIT. So even though we are a medium to large size university, once you set foot in the classrooms, you'll really realize that it doesn't feel like such a big place. Um, on average, our class size is about 22 and the student to faculty ratio is 13 to one. Also good to know that almost all RIT classes are faculty taught. So we are home to nine academic colleges, including NTID, which I had mentioned. We also offer close to 90 different majors. We have programs in a little bit of everything. So engineering, science, computing, game design, health sciences and engineering technology, and then some other areas that you might not expect from an institute of technology, like art and design, film and animation, photography, liberal arts and business. So a nice variety of STEM and non-STEM programs, which really allows RIT students to create some interesting combinations of majors and minors, also double majors or even design their own unique program through something called our School of Individualized Study. Now I wanna move into discussing some opportunities for experiential learning. So this is a really important, important part of RIT's culture. Experiential learning can take many forms, such as undergraduate research, which you'll hear about from Diksha a little bit later, entrepreneurship, study abroad, senior year capstone projects, community service, clinical experiences, lab and studio-based projects, and internships. So at RIT, we offer all of these options, but we are best known for our cooperative education program or co-op for short, which you hear more about from Dylan a little bit later. RIT is one of only um, nine national universities that's recognized by US News and World Report for co-ops, internships, and undergraduate research. So this really speaks volumes of the breadth and depth and quality of the experiential learning opportunities that you'll have as a student at RIT. If you hadn't heard of the term co-op before, just think of it like a form of internship. So internships can be full-time or part-time, they can be paid or unpaid. The big difference is that co-ops will always be full-time 
paid professional work experiences. So RIT has one of the oldest and largest co-op programs in the world. Right now, over 3,400 employment partners, which are in all 50 states and in 30 countries. That means students don't necessarily stay in Rochester while they're on their co-op. Although there are many Rochester-based employers, students can co-op in other cities across the nation or even abroad, or even back in your hometown. Uh, most co-ops last three to four months, so either a summer or a semester. Something really important to know about co-op is that you are not charged tuition by RIT during your co-op experiences. So you're paid by your employer. That money is yours to keep, whether that's to pay for housing while you're on your co-op assignment, or you could put it potentially towards your next year of tuition. Our career services and co-op office hosts several career fairs throughout the academic year. So we have uh, two huge fairs every year in the fall and in the spring. These events will typically bring about 800 recruiters from over 300 companies to campus. We also have several smaller fairs throughout the year that target specific academic areas. Uh, so for example, Creative Industry Day for our College of Art and Design students, and then even a fair specifically for our Packaging Science students. The Career Services and Co-op Office will frequently host our partner companies, and the recruiters will conduct in-person interviews with our students right on campus. Co-op requirements at RIT will vary by major. So some majors will require several co-ops that total about a year. These programs are mostly in uh, engineering, engineering technology, and computer science. They're therefore going to be five-year programs. But it's really important to remember that families still only pay for four years of tuition, and that will be spread out over the five-year bachelor's degree. Other majors will only require three to nine months of co-op, which are mostly completed during the summertime. So for a small number of our programs, co-ops are optional. Regardless of whether your co-op or your program requires co-op or not, the career services counselors are there to help each student with things like your job search, resume writing, interview skills, and more. The sample schedules on this slide will show a typical co-op sequence for both four and five year programs at RIT. So as you can see, co-ops are spread out so that students will alternate periods of time learning on campus, then they apply what they've learned in a professional work setting. So in other words, the classroom learning and the co-ops will build upon each other. There are lots of other benefits of co-op. So first, co-op lets you apply what you've learned in class while it's still fresh in your mind. Co-ops can also help you confirm that you've chosen the right field of study. Um, you may learn through your work experience, I think like Dylan did, as he'll talk about. Uh, you may want to change your focus. Uh, it's better to realize that while you're still in college instead of after you graduate. So you get that trial and error experience. You also have the opportunity to network with professionals in your field. As you might expect, it's very common for RIT students to get job offers from employers where they did their co-ops. Uh, remember, you're also getting paid, as I mentioned, and you're not paying tuition. So you're getting some return in, on your investment while you're still a student. Finally, uh, you're adding to your professional resume while you're still a student, and that can really make a big difference when it's time to start your career. So as you'd probably expect, the experience that you get as an RIT student will pay off. We survey our graduating seniors each year about their employment status within six months after graduation. So for our class of 2019, our outcomes rate was 94%. So that outcomes rate, as you can see here on this slide, includes those who are employed, those who are pursuing graduate study, and then those who have alternative plans, such as uh, Peace Corps or Teach America or the military. Here you can see a small sample of some of our major employer partners, and then you can view detailed career outcome related information by academic program at a site called joboutlook.rit.edu. Within that site, you can see specific outcomes by major that'll include the average co-op and starting salaries, You'll see typical job titles and then employer partners that are specific to each program of study. One of our other experiential learning opportunities is undergraduate research, which is available beginning in your first year on a part-time basis during the academic year and then available on a full-time basis over the summer. So an undergraduate research symposium is offered in August. Students can present their research findings to faculty, staff, 
alumni and fellow students at RIT. There are research opportunities for undergraduates in each of RIT's colleges, uh, such areas as photonics, cybersecurity, uh, imaging science, personalized healthcare technology, digital media, and many others. One of the many exciting changes, oops, let me go back a slide, sorry. One of the many exciting changes over the last decade is the increase of student involvement in innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurship. The university has responded by providing the people and facilities to move their ideas forward. Each spring, we host an annual innovation and creativity festival that's called Imagine RIT. That event will showcase countless examples of innovation and creativity of our students. One of our newest buildings on campus is Magic Spell Studios. Magic stands for Media, Arts, Games, Interaction, and Creativity, and it opened its doors in October of 2018. It's a hub for digital media interested students, primarily in our schools of design, film and animation, and interactive games and media. This building features a 7,000 square foot soundstage, virtual reality labs, professional color correction and sound mixing facilities, and it also serves as an incubator to launch games, apps, and other creative for-profit ventures. Do you like the TV show Shark Tank? At RIT, we have our own version that's called Tighter Tank. This is an annual event allowing students to pitch their business ideas to a panel of judges and they compete for cash prizes. Facilities like the Simone Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, our student incubator, and our soon to be named new makerspace, along with the guidance of professional mentors, will provide students with the support they need to bring their ideas and dreams to fruition. Studying abroad or working abroad could be a life-changing form of experiential learning. RIT is fortunate to have campuses in over, um, overseas in several countries across the globe. So you could study abroad with one of our many partner universities as well. Depending on your major and country of interest, you may be able to progress in your academic program while you're abroad. Otherwise, you can work with your advisor to maximize the fulfillment of general education and free elective requirements. RIT also supports work abroad experiences. This allows you to satisfy a co-op requirement while also having a culturally enriching experience abroad. We offer more than 50 accelerated uh, bachelor's and master's programs in a variety of combinations at RIT. So you can apply for an accelerated bachelor's master's degree as a second year student. If you're accepted, you could complete your programs in as few as five years and in many cases, you could earn a 40% scholarship for the graduate education portion of your program. If your program and qualifications allow for a direct entry pathway starting in your first year, we will formally invite you to that opportunity. Austin McCord is an RIT alumnus and the founder of Datto, which is a computing security com company. So he decided a few years back, he wanted to give back to his alma mater. After selling his company, he presented RIT with a check for $50 million. So thanks to Austin's generosity, in fall of 2020, we opened our new Global Cybersecurity Institute. In the spirit of RIT's uh, innovation and creativity, we're currently in the construction phase of an exciting, innovative maker and learning complex. So, so far I've talked a lot about academics and experiential learning. So I'll start talking now about what you can expect to find at RIT outside of the classroom. You'll be happy to know there's more to RIT than just classes and co-ops. We have more than 300 active clubs on campus and we host hundreds of events on campus each year. The diversity of the student body and the wide ranging interests are really showcased through the variety of clubs that we have to offer. Also about 10% of our students participate in fraternities and sororities. They are extremely philanthropic organizations. Many of them have houses right on our campus. As far as varsity sports, we are the RIT Tigers. We're the proud home of 24 varsity teams for men and women, including division one programs in men and women's ice hockey. We also have one of the top Division III lacrosse programs in the country. The D3 teams compete in the Liberty League against other upstate rivals. So those include Clarkson, St. Lawrence, Vassar, Union, Bard, RPI, Ithaca, Hobart, and William Smith, Skidmore, and the University of Rochester right down the road. 
For those students who'd like to participate in sports, but not necessarily at the varsity level, we have a long list of club, intramural, and recreational sports too. Club sports have practice sessions and they'll compete against local and regional colleges. Intramural sports may or may not have practice sessions and they compete against other RIT teams. Recreational activities and sports may meet once or twice per semester, like a hiking or a rafting trip, or they may meet once a week and are considered for fun more than competitive. Right now, there's about 100 recreational opportunities offered per semester. For anyone who's interested in esports, there are over a thousand students on our campus that are members of one or more, more RIT esports teams. At our campus bookstore, you can actually buy RIT esports apparel. RIT has won several championships in recent years in a wide variety of games. More than a uh, thousand RIT students will participate in performing arts each year, everything from theater and improv to dance and music ensembles. We offer several academic minors in music and theater. Our students are very involved in Rochester's annual Fringe Festival. We have new performance spaces planned for theater and dance, and we also offer performing arts scholarships now. One of RIT's goals is to develop one of the leading performing arts programs in the nation for non-majors. I think right now we're well on our way to this goal. As far as living on campus, we are a residential community and we offer a mix of residence halls, suites, and apartments. Freshmen outside the Rochester area are required to live on campus for the first year. Students can apply for special interest housing, such as engineering house, computer science house, or HOGS, which stands for the House of General Sciences. There are also different academic and lifestyle floors available, such as honors housing and gender inclusive housing. RIT Dining offers a range of dining options across campus. This can include Gracie's, which is our main dining hall, the Global Grill and Market, several coffee shops, Salsaritas, our Mexican style restaurant, and we're also home to the only Ben and Jerry's within the Rochester area. There are plenty of other resources for students on campus. As you can see here, a post office, different fitness centers, computing labs, free laundry facilities, and then student services such as the health center, counseling and disability services offices. So the RIT campus is located in the suburb of Henrietta that is six miles south of downtown Rochester. We are the third largest city in New York and we have about a million people living in the Rochester metro area. There are about 15 area colleges and universities. We're called the Flower City and we are a hub of imaging and digital media innovation. Rochester is also home to Wegmans, uh, the top ranked supermarket in the US. Music lovers will appre appreciate Rochester for its International Jazz Festival, the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra, and lots of concerts at local venues. Those who are interested in theater can enjoy productions of the Rochester Broadway Theater League and Jiva Theater. Festivals are also extremely popular in Rochester, including our annual Lilac Festival, the Fringe Festival, and Cornhill Arts Festival. The Greater Finger Lakes and Western New York regions are home to miles of waterfront along Lake Ontario. We also have trails alongside the Erie Canal, a 90-foot waterfall in downtown Rochester, nearby ski areas, and historical attractions tied to the civil rights and women's suffrage movement. We're also fortunate to be home to the Strong Museum of Play and the National Toy Hall of Fame. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Mark. He's gonna talk about the admissions and aid opportunities at RIT. Thanks so much, Mariah. Um, so applicants to RIT can choose one of three paths. Most students apply to a specific major and if admitted, start in their major from day one. Um, if they end up deciding they want to switch majors later, they make that request through the academic department that they wish to switch into. These requests are honored based on their academic performance and space availability in their requested program. Students who are undecided about a specific major but think they know which academic area they prefer may apply to one of our college-based exploration programs. These are one-year programs that are designed to allow exploration within a cognate area before declaring a major without losing any progress towards on-time graduation. A third option is to apply to the University Exploration Program. This program is designed for students that have multiple academic areas of interest across the university. Students begin working with an academic advisor to craft a fall semester schedule that allows them to explore potential areas of academic interest. Most students will declare a major after their first or second semester. And although we cannot guarantee 
uh, no delay in graduation for this program, depending on which major is ultimately selected, this program has a very high success rate of on-time graduation. At RIT, we have different admission criteria based upon the student's intended major, a practice we call differential admission. We practice differential admission for two reasons. First, given the diversity of our academic programs, it makes sense to evaluate candidates by major or exploration option. For example, what we're looking for from a software engineering candidate is very different than what we're looking for from a fine art photography student. The second reason is that we want to ensure a high quality experience in your major. We want your class sizes not to be too large, ensure you have opportunities to have relationships with, with your professors, access to equipment, labs and facilities, and that you are not competing against too many other students for co-ops, internships, research experiences, and full-time job opportunities. For that reason, we encourage you to list your top three programs on your application if you have more than one genuine interest. If we can't admit you into your first choice program, we may be able to offer you admission into one of your other choices. The numbers on the right represent the middle 50% ranges of GPAs on a 100-point scale, SAT scores and ACT scores for students who were admitted to RIT last year. However, these ranges can vary significantly by college and major. If we have more qualified candidates for a specific major than spots in the program, we will start a waiting list by major. Biomedical engineering, mechanical engineering, computer science, computing security, game design and development, Physician Assistant, BSMS, and Film and Animation are examples of programs that typically have a waiting list. Next slide. When we review applications as an admissions committee, we use a holistic process that includes several factors. Regardless of the major you apply to, the most important factor that is considered is your academic record. Your academic record is made up of several components, your GPA, your class rank if your school ranks, academic trends if present, meeting course prerequisites for the major you're applying to, and how you've challenged yourself, taking into consideration your academic interests and the level of rigor offered at your school. For example, honors, advanced placement, international baccalaureate, or college courses. We will give more emphasis in our review to courses that are related to your academic area of interest. RIT adopted a SAT ACT optional policy in May of 2020 for admission and scholarship consideration. For students who submit SAT or ACT results, we will consider them as part of the review process, and we will super score the SAT and ACT if you've taken them multiple times. If you take both the SAT and ACT, we will use whichever test score best advantages your application. If you do not submit an SAT or ACT result, you will receive full admission and scholarship consideration for all programs and will not be disadvantaged in any way. If you are interested in the RIT SUNY Upstate Medical University Accelerated Scholars Program, please note that SUNY Upstate requires SAT or ACT submission as part of the RIT application process, and the deadline to apply is November 15th. We do require at least one recommendation letter from your school counselor. You are welcome to submit additional letters from teachers, an employer, or coach. All of them will be considered in the review process and most candidates submit one to three letters of recommendation. While academics are important, we also consider the extracurricular activities you are involved in both in and outside of school. Please share with us information about your involvement in community service activities, performing arts, athletics, honors you have received, leadership positions you have held, or if you've started your own business. We also, also take into consideration if you aren't as involved in extracurricular activities due to the pandemic, work or family commitments. Uh, so please share information about those experiences with us as well. Like many universities, RIT requires an essay as part of the admission review process. The essay is your opportunity to go beyond the quantitative aspects of your candidacy and share with us your personal story. For students applying to programs in our schools of art, design, or film and animation, a portfolio is also required and is a significant admissions factor. A slide room submission is the most popular option for sending us your portfolio. RIT's portfolio guidelines can be found on our website. One thing we don't require is an admissions interview. We do offer them, um, typically on campus and in select cities in the fall um, pre-pandemic, but for now we'll be offering them virtually. They are meant to be informational in nature, not evaluative, so be prepared to speak about yourself, your interests, and have questions prepared in advance for us. When I, oh, sorry about that. When applying to RIT, you can choose either 
early decision one, early decision two, or regular <laughs> decision. Sorry. Both early decision plans are appropriate if you identify RIT as your first choice university. The benefits of early decision are that you receive an admission decision and financial aid and scholarship notification sooner. There is a higher acceptance rate through early decision and you can select your residence hall building and room before the regular decision students. Even though early decision is binding, you can be released from the binding nature of early decision if you are admitted to your second or third choice program, or if you determine that our scholarship and financial aid offer is not affordable. About a third of our entering first year class apply via early decision. If RIT is your top choice, I highly recommend applying early decision. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Especially if you are applying to one of RIT's more competitive majors. This chart shows the preferred application deadlines for all three options, as well as when students will receive their decision and when their acceptance of admission deposit is due. To make your RIT education affordable, we offer both need-based and merit-based scholarships. Last year, RIT awarded over $300 million in financial assistance. For need-based financial aid consideration, you must submit the free application for federal student aid, better known as the FAFSA. For families that qualify, a typical financial aid package includes a combination of grants, loans, and work study. Students can work up to 20 hours per week on campus, and there are plenty of positions available for those that are interested. In addition, we consider all admitted students for RIT's various merit-based scholarships, including presidential scholarships, founder scholarships, recognition, and Tiger Pride scholarships. Students can also be considered for specialized scholarships, such as FIRST Robotics, Project Lead the Way, Performing Arts, and ROTC. Affordability is important to us, and we want you to let us know if you have any affordability concerns after reviewing your award. We have a variety of opportunities to connect with us further and learn more about the university. You may register for an upcoming open house at ret.edu slash open house for an in-person campus tour, a virtual student-led tour, or an admissions interview at ret.edu slash visit. Please feel free to contact us with any questions. We'll be more than happy to help. And with that, I'd now like to welcome our students, Diksha and Dylan, and invite them to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Diksha. I'm a fourth year biomedical science and biology major and I'm from Fairport, New York. Hi, my name is Dylan. I am a fifth year software training student hailing from Buffalo, New York. Great, thank you so much. Um, so we're gonna kick off the question and answer period with some questions and we invite our audience members to send us your questions through the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Um, so to kick things off, um, could each of you please tell us about your college search process? Um, what inspired your interest in studying STEM and why you ultimately chose RIT? I can start it off. Um, I think I applied to 19 schools through my college search process, which yeah, I can see Dylan laughing. Um, that's a lot. So probably don't apply to that many. It was, it was too much. That's a lot of you know, secondary essays, stuff like that. Um, I was looking for research. That was my main thing. Also a good community because um, I'm pre-med. So RIT had researched my first year, which is what I was really interested in. Um, and then also the community. It's a really big school, but it has like the small school feel. And that's what I really loved about it. Um, STEM, I was always interested in pre-med and biology. And I took, an I took a and anatomy, AP chemistry. So I took all of that in high school and it really just like ensured that I wanted to study this for the rest of my life. So. All right. Uh, and then for me, uh, unlike Diksha, I did not apply to many colleges. I only applied to three. Um, I knew growing up that I wanted to do some sort of engineering or a like computer science. Uh, it wasn't actually until I visited RIT that I learned my major actually existed. So that was something really cool. Um, getting to actually meet like the department itself and meeting the people in it, um, getting to know like more so what I'd actually be doing, where I wouldn't just be programming all day. I'd actually like be following some sort of process and being able to you know, actually see myself making products as a result of what I learned. Um, that was kind of my biggest drive. And then just like visiting campus and like obviously learning all about that. And like I said, meeting the people, that is what kind of solidified my choice and made me want to come here. Uh, I will say the co-op program also helps learning learning about that. Um, just knowing that I'd be leaving here, you know, a little bit later than my friends, but also already having a year of experience under my belt, I felt was just way too good to pass up. So that's mostly why, that's why I came here. Great. 
Um, could each of you take yourselves back to freshman year and describe what that first year experience was like, um, specifically as a STEM student in terms of um, connections with faculty members, what average class sizes were, for, especially for your STEM classes, um, and if you encountered any challenges, and if so, how you overcame those. I know that was a lot to ask, but just talk about your first year in general. Describe that for us. Uh, yeah, so my first year, it was definitely an interesting one, freshman year. I don't know, it's something it's something different. I don't know how to describe it, but it's just definitely something different. Um, my classes, I came in as a biology major, so that's definitely a smaller major at RIT. Uh, my largest class, I think, was 100 students, and that was general chemistry, and then it broke up into smaller labs, which were 20, and then recitations, which were 40. Um, I think the hardest part about college first year was just the timing of everything. I know in high school, I was so used to just waking up at seven, going to class, having extracurriculars at the end of the day, and then doing homework and going to bed. And in college, your first year, you're kind of thrown into this pile where you just have like, I had like four hours in between classes and I was like, what do I do with my time? Do I sleep? Or, you know, do I do homework? Like, the, you know, endless opportunities, endless possibilities. So that was kind of the biggest thing for me. I was just like, how do I manage this all? And then professors, they're super helpful. I don't know how it is at every other school because I go to RIT, but um, I love my professors. They are so helpful. I can't emphasize it enough. Um, they definitely are there to help you out. And that's one of the things I really loved about coming here and being here is they're always there to help you out. Office hours, take advantage of those. Um, those are great. So yeah, it was definitely really easy to connect with professors and get the help on schoolwork. So that was nice. And just as a quick follow to that, Diksha, when did you get involved in research um, on campus or when do most students get involved in research? Um, I got involved, I think my second or third month here. Um, most students in my realm of study try to get involved their first year. Um, typically it's second year, but I know a lot of people who wanna go into like getting a PhD will do first year. Um, it just kind of depends on your timeline, but first or second year is really typical. And how did you go about um, securing that research opportunity? Yeah, so at RIT, we have a week of orientation. And during that week, you have an academic day. So for me in the College of Science, our academic day consisted of meeting professors and then presenting about their research. So I met one professor and I was like, wow, your research sounds super cool. Um, and I just you know, met her, talked to her, um, and I reached out to her and she was like, okay, I don't have room in my lab right now, but maybe you know, in a couple of weeks or something. And then I just kept bothering her. So love that. <laughs> she probably was so annoyed with me, but it's fine. And then, um, yeah, she just gave me a chance and that's kind of how I started. So that was awesome. Great. Dylan, what was your first year like? Yeah, so for me, um, even though I went into a program that like was heavy on the programming, uh, I knew nothing about coding. So it was definitely a, uh, a somewhat, somewhat of a struggle at first. Um, what's really nice is that my major software engineering has their own like dedicated club for students in the major. Um, in there, they have like this really nice tutoring center where you can get help in pretty much any class that you're in, um, all run by the students themselves. So it's all like fourth and fifth years helping out the first and second years. Uh, so I definitely spent a lot of time in there with that. Um, and just, it was definitely a big adjustment, not only my major specific classes, but also thing just trying to get adjusted to how classes were in general. Um, my largest classes I had were I believe like 40 to 45 students. Um, and what's nice is while that may seem like large at first, later in the week, you go into lab and recitation classes for a lot of those. So once you're past the general lecture, they get much smaller. So then instead of being in like 45 students, you're like 15 or 20. So you definitely have, um, smaller class sizes and you just have a much easier time getting help just because not only is there a specific uh, space for me to go as a software engineering student, but there's like tutoring centers all across campus. So my first year, I spent a lot of time in uh, a lot of tutoring centers. So that, that's how I did my, how that's how I went my first year. Great. And as a follow up to that, Dylan, did um, you participate in Code Zero or know someone that has? And can you describe what that is? Yeah, so I actually participated in Code Zero myself. Um, so code zero is like a very small introduction to programming and kind of getting you comfortable with, you know, what it entails. Um, it doesn't really teach you a whole lot in the sense of the way that classes themselves are structured, but it gives you a nice little intro to it. So that way you're not kind of just basically thrown to the wolves as soon as you join the program. And another follow-up, Dylan, um, would you say that there's a stigma around 
um, students that have to seek help with a, with a class? Like, what's the kind of atmosphere around that on campus? I definitely don't think so. Um, I will say that classes here can be challenging at times, and every student recognizes that. Um, I know in particular in the software engineering program, a lot of us have complained about University of Physics 2 over time. So it's not uncommon to find a lot of our students in our classes either going to, uh, in the College of Science, we have what's known as the Bates Science Study Center, where you can get help with physics work, or the SE department has a specific group of people to help students purely with university physics, because a lot of us do just end up struggling with it. So no, there's definitely, you're, it's definitely not frowned upon to get help because pretty much everyone realizes the classes do get challenging for some people at some point. This is a question that Mariah and I get a lot, and I'm, you may both get it as well um, as, as tour guides and ambassadors. Um, for each of your respective majors or colleges, um, would you describe the atmosphere as collaborative or competitive? Oh, that's a good one. Um, yeah, I do get that one a lot. Um, it absolutely com collaborative. Uh, it really in no way competitive. It, it's funny, you think with the co-op program where you're all trying to get good jobs that it would be very competitive. But honestly, with everyone having such like different things they want to work towards, in the end, no one's ever really fighting for the same positions. Um, and overall, we all do want us to succeed. You know, college is a time where we're all just trying to fight, figure out what we want to do for the rest of our lives. So we definitely aren't trying to fight for anything. We really just... We're here to help each other out and make sure that we really just can can get through it and you know move on to what we want to do with the rest of our lives like i said yeah for mine it's definitely more collaborative i think the pre-med stigma is competition all the time you know there's only a certain amount of spots in medical school so obviously you want to put yourself out there first um that was one thing that really drew me to rit is everyone super collaborative and they want you to succeed at the end of the day medicine is a collaboration it's not you know I'm going to look after this patient by myself and I don't need any of your help. So I think that's something that RIT, especially my college really instills in you is like, let's collaborate and work on this together instead of I'm going to look after myself, which is something I really love. Great. Thank you. Um, I was actually a STEM student at RIT once upon a time. I was a statistics major and I came into RIT thinking that I wanted to work for the Census Bureau. That was my dream job. Uh, I ended up taking a lot of courses at RIT outside of my major, like business courses, sociology courses, and actually a lot of courses tied to quality control and quality assurance. And my first professional job was working in Germany for a um, manufacturing company um, working in a quality department and it was through a professor connection that I got my that that opportunity um, so where people come into RIT with their aspirations is oftentimes very different than where they end up can you each describe about how what you've learned and your experiences outside the classroom has shaped where you are right now in terms of your professional aspirations and growth and where you think you're headed next I don't know if Dylan wants to go first. Yeah, I'll go first. Why not? Um, so for me, honestly, outside of the classroom, all of the experience I've gotten to kind of leave me where I am today has just been through co-op. So um, throughout my time, I've kind of really helped solidify what I want to pursue as far as like what field of software engineering I want to go through. Um, and just being able to get to talk to like all of the professionals that I've worked with, you know, people who have, what, 30 years on me as far as working in the field, um, getting all that. Not only that, but even being able to talk to people who like, again, through our uh, major specific club graduates who are still like a part of the club or at least are in contact getting to talk with them and like see what they what what you know what they're doing with their education what they've done um just getting to interact with all the people whether freshly graduated or like i said 30 years in the workforce um, and getting to have that experience myself has really just kind of pushed me towards what i'm pursuing uh as of right now yeah um i've always wanted to know that i wanted to be a doctor but I think sometimes, you know, the doubt sets in and you're like, can I really do this? Um, but the two big aspects of medicine are research and then patient experience. So coming into RIT and really getting like actual hands-on research um, and actually finding like a passion for that, I knew that I was like, okay, I can really do this. And then I also am a patient care tech at a local hospital. And I was like, can I actually, you know, work in this field? Can I do it? Can I deal with it? And like, just knowing that I can be there and work with other people and learning from the doctors and the nurses, um, those two experiences have really helped me knowing that I picked the right path, so. Um, this, is, this could be academic or non-academic, um, but what's your favorite thing at RIT? Like, what's the first thing that pops in your mind that, that, that you love most about being an RIT student? Hockey. 
talky 100%. I, I'm so sad that in my last year, I can't actually go to any of the games because it was, it's always been such a fun experience. Um, so for our hockey games, uh, as described earlier with sports, we are division one in hockey. We have no football here, but honestly that's okay because we treat hockey here. Like you would find people treating football at other schools. Um, we have an awesome pep band who really just bring, like brings in the atmosphere, like really makes you feel like you're getting into the game, whether it's, you know, the star Wars death March is like people are, going onto the field or just anything like that. Um, and they also have the corner crew. They really keep, they really uh, love to just chant and let the other team know that uh, they're not that great of players. Um, it's just a super fun experience. Uh, I myself was the band geek in high school, so I never really liked sports, but just going and getting to enjoy the atmosphere is just, it's been one of my favorite things here at RIT. Dylan stole mine. So it was hockey. Um, I guess I could say hockey too. But then this is like not a thing, but I really just love the people. I don't know if that's like a correct answer, but everyone's super friendly and the community's fabulous. So highly recommend coming here because everyone's just great, you know? Speaking about recommendations, we're kind of nearing the end of our time. Um, what advice do you have for students as they move forward in their college search and their ultimate college choice? Most of the audience today are juniors or sophomores. They're kind of beginning their college search. What would you recommend to them? My advice kind of falls flat uh, now that we're in a time of pandemic, because my advice, my always go to advice was to visit the campus just to see it in person, because honestly, like any sort of like pictures you may see online just can't do it justice. Um, so if I can't say that because the pandemic is going on, my other thing is obviously academics are important at college, but also look for a community itself because like you can, you can only be in class so much, you know, what are you going to do outside of class? Um, look for a good group, you know, a good community where there's a lot of fun things to do outside of it. Um, you know, see if like, oh, they have sports you're interested in or see if they have clubs you're interested in, you know, something, something that you can do to have fun outside of the classroom. Make sure wherever you're looking for has something like that for you. I think mine's a little bit more cliche, uh, but just, you know, go with the flow. I know like it's crazy. Like I'm graduating this year. I know Dylan is too. And I remember just, you know, applying and doing all that and it goes by really fast. So enjoy your time now, apply to the colleges you want to. Don't worry about the amount of work you have to apply to put in or, you know, money or anything like that. Just like, just enjoy it and just enjoy the process. Um, Cause you're going to get to college soon and then you're going to be graduating and then we're gonna be adulting now and that's crazy. So just go with the flow and just enjoy your time. And Mariah, I have a question for you. Um, what advice do you have um, as an admissions person to a student that's approaching the college search process? Any tips? Yes, I would say work with your school counselor. Uh, they have your best interests at heart. They may suggest a school to you that you have never heard of, for example. Um, maybe your school counselor even recommended RIT and that's why you're with us tonight. So um, your school counselors have visited a lot of campuses and they really know what's a good fit for their students. So um, consider, consider their suggestions. And you know, if they brought you here to us tonight, we're, we're glad that they did. Thank you so much. I want to thank Diksha and Dylan for taking time out of a busy semester. I want to thank our captionists this evening and Clarissa, our host um, from StriveScan. And to thank you all of our audience members for joining us today. We really hope you found this helpful. And Mariah and I especially want you to know that we're here to help you with any step of the process going forward. So don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'll be happy to help. Awesome. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback you can give us. And like I mentioned, this session was recorded and will be available by the end of day tomorrow in case you guys wanted to refresh your memory about anything you might have seen or heard. Again, thank you for joining us and have a good evening.